Hey guys, it's Alpha, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a um, Steam and other identifier logger for 5M, um, which is the first part of a short mini series within my 5M tutorial series um, on how to make a framework. In case you aren't entirely sure what a framework is, a very popular one in the roleplay community of 5M is ESX. So basically a framework is um, a collection of resources that work together and primarily f uh, use one main like base resource as the um, as like a main resource to help the functionality of, of all the others. Um, so yeah, if you know what ESX is, you know what a framework is and basically I'm going to be showing you a couple things on how to make your own framework in the next few tutorials. Um, so today it's just going to be logging like identifiers from different users on the first time they log in So basically it will check the database when someone joins the server and if they've if it's their first time joining and the identifiers aren't logged It will log them. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to our resources folder And we're going to create a new directory today not in any of these and we're going to call it uh, framework obviously in square brackets because it's going to have quite a few resources in there and then this is going to be the initial resource so i'm going to call this one framework dash init because it's going to be the initial you know the base resource um, and then inside of here we're going to need the usual things such as fx manifest dot lua And we're also going to need a server.lua. So what we're going to do now that we've made those two is we're going to open Visual Studio Code. And what we're actually going to do in Visual Studio Code is we're going to go to Explorer up here. And we're going to open the folder of our server data. And if we select the folder, as you can see here, it shows all of our stuff like our server.cfg. And then our resources just here. This is something that I've only just discovered to be honest with you. And it's actually very useful. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, if you want to do it as well, go for it. I've also just realized that I've misspelled manifest. So I'm going to rename that. Okay. Perfect. So as you all know by now, I'm just going to do the usual stuff that we put into an fx manifest.lua. So fx underscore version. Game awesome. The description of this resource is the initializing for the work. So we've got server script. So we're going to have multiple server scripts referenced here. So we're going to need to do um, server underscore scripts plural and then do an open curly bracket. The professional name of that bracket is, but the, the curly one. And then we're going to do server.lua and then a comma at the end of that line. Like so. And then on the next line, we're going to do at my SQL dash async slash lib slash and then this this part has some capitals my sql and dot lua so basically this is going to be using the mysql.lua file inside of the lib folder which is inside of the mysql async resource which we've used in a previous tutorial i believe it was tutorial number three um basically this is just so we the um commands to uh, the database we're just going to save that and then we're also going to open the server.lua and then this is where we're going to be doing most of our coding today so i'm going to be adding some comments along the way just so you know what everything does this section as you can see will be handling when a player is connecting um, so we're going to add an event handler for this. Back to H. Event 
Paddler. They are connect. Function. Side of the parameters for the function is going to be name, set, kick, reason, and deferrals. And then this second uh, close bracket can go down and then have an end for it. And then inside of this event handler, uh, we're just going to define some variables. Well, we're going to create some variables. Define them later. So we're going to do local source. And this one's just going to be source. Do local identifiers, plural. And this one's going to be get player identifiers and using source. You know whose identifiers we're getting. And we're going to do local Steam ID. So this is the identifiers that we're going to be grabbing. So we've got Steam ID, uh, license, uh, Discord, 5M, and IP. Obviously, if you don't want to grab any of these, you don't have to them so if you don't want to grab someone's IP if you don't want to go discord grab their 5m you don't have to but I'm just going to be showing you how to grab all of them just in case you know whatever you need them for um, and then just below that we're going to be I'm just going to space it space it a bit and then we're going to be defining the variables as the users identifiers just here so And then we're also just here, we're going to be checking, like, obviously, if the um, user has Steam open or not. And then, so, yeah, just here, we're going to be um, doing 4K, uh, comma, V. So this is a, a list in iPad. So not, not really a list, but it's, um, like, going through the list of all of the identifiers is what I mean. Um, in iPairs and then obviously identifiers because that's the list that we're going through. Do. No, Discord. Correct. Okay. And then we're just doing end. Okay, and then inside of here, we're going to do if string dot match and in brackets B, comma, and then in quotation marks Steam. Then. Steam ID is equal to V. And then we can do a print uh, just to say basically that the Steam ID has been grabbed. And then what I'm going to do is actually print out the Steam ID. And this will print to the console. Just It's, it's basically, uh, you don't need to do that. That's just debugging to see that it's actually working. Uh, and then we're going to do else if string dot match the license. So we're going to do this for each one. So we've got Steam ID, now we're going to do license, then Discord, then 5M, then, then IP. Oh, I need to do that in quotation marks. And then what I'm also going to do is do license with a uh, colon because there's two types of licenses. There's license and license two when identifiers are grabbed. Uh, we don't want to use license two, we just want license. So I'm going to add a on there just to make sure it's getting uh, license without license two and then so this one will be license equals v and i'm sure you can assume what the rest of it's going to be so it should be else if and string dot match it's going to do the same thing for each of them so i'm just going to skip ahead for this part and then um, just show you this part once it's done So that's all of them. So I've got obviously Steam ID, License, Discord, 5M, and IP. And then we've got to make sure we put an end on the end of that as well. And then once we've done that, we can go outside of these two ends, but we're still within this last end. And then we're going to add another comment just here, because this section is going to be checking if the user has a Steam ID. So 
basically the way we check that obviously because we've grabbed it now we're gonna do if not steam id then and then we're gonna do deferrals dot done and then in brackets uh, and and quote marks we're gonna do need, you need to open theme and this will basically give the user a message uh, that, that they need to open Steam before they can play. And we're going to do else after that. Oh, not else. Hold on a minute. Let me just add back that end. There we go. And we also are going to need to add an end here as well. So. And then basically what's happening here. I'll just They do have a okay. basically then yeah within this else so obviously if they don't then it'll tell them they need to open steam if else if they do then um it will do deferrals dot done brackets there we go and then below that uh what we'll do is we're gonna do another print statement just for uh bug fixing and I'm going to put Steam ID is being fetched. And basically what this is going to be doing is obviously because we've detected that they've got a Steam ID, we're going to try and fetch it out of the database. Um, so, comment checks if the user's Steam is a database. And what we're going to do is execute a, or actually fetch from the um, SQL database. So we're going to do my SQL dot async. Just make sure that your capitals are lining up with my capitals here. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. And fetch scalar. And basically, what this does is this the this grabs the first, um, basically the first piece of data in the list. Um, so basically the first like ID or Steam ID from wherever the Steam ID matches to one that we've got. So what we're going to do is in quotation marks, make sure that also your syntax here is correct with mine. So all the capitals and all that. Uh, select one from, we're going to do user underscore identifiers. And then in all caps, where, and then not in caps, Steam ID equals, and then we're going to need to do at Steam ID. And then after this quotation mark, but still within the closed bracket, we're going to do a comma and then an open curly bracket and then take this down to the next line. And then in square brackets, we're going to do in quotation marks at Steam ID. And outside of the square brackets, we're going to do equals D. What we grabbed earlier up here. And then what we're going to need to do is just after the uh, close curly bracket, but still within the main bracket, we're going to do a comma and then function brackets result like so. And then send down this bracket to the next line. And we're actually just going to do an end there. And then actually within the end, we're going to do if not result then we'll see that's getting this result just here uh, so it basically if we did find a thirsty muddy we get a result if obviously if we didn't find a result then we will do print theme capital not found converting identifiers into like so and then below that we're going to run another um command for the mysql so we're going to do my sql dot async and then dot execute like so and then in brackets we're going to do insert into and then lowercase again, user identifiers again. And then in brackets, 
we're gonna do steam name steam id license discord 5m ip and then outside of this bracket oh all right go back to the end and outside of this bracket that's in the in the quotation marks we're going to do values and then inside of some more brackets we're going to do at steam name comma at steam D, comma at license basically for all of them at discord 5m at ip and then just outside of the quotation mark, but still within the final bracket, we're going to do a comma. And we're actually going to take this onto a new line. And then we're going to do in an open curly bracket. We're going to do a open square bracket as well. And then we're going to do in quotation marks, team name, out of the square bracket equals get player name and then source. like so and then we do the next thing right. D equals steam D. and we're going to need to do this for all of them uh, And basically once we've done all of those we can go back to the next line to the line below sorry let's go back in indented again to the same indentation at the line above and then basically what the reason that didn't indent is because we need to add an end here like so um but before we do that end we're actually gonna do an else and below that we're gonna do okay well first of all just before the else we're gonna do a little print statement just to say uh, all inserted so print into fires inserted into base so oh, and then else steam id found because basically you know, if if there isn't found then obviously it does this but if it does steam id found so and then that's basically all of the code within the server.lua so you can save that and then we're actually going to need to make another file um, in this. We can still make it in here. It doesn't need to be in here, but it's probably best to make it within the resource folder um, because let's say in the future you have like reset your computer or something, but you've obviously backed up your, your server data. Uh, you might need to remake your database. Um, so having the code to make the table that you're using uh, is very useful. So I'm going to make one just here called framework.sql. And then basically we're going to open that in studio as well and then the code that we want to do now this is a different syntax from lua so just make sure that you've got the exact same text as what i'm doing uh, because the syntax is totally different and if you do it wrong type the wrong symbols or whatever it, it might the code not work at all so on the first line we're going to do create database if not exists and then we're going to have to use tildes which are not quotation marks this is a quotation mark and this is a tilde obviously they're, they're very similar as you can see so the first one's a tilde second one's a quotation mark quotation marks will not work you have to use tildes if you don't know what a tilde is um, on most keyboards it's the key below escape um, if it's not there for you you might have to just copy and paste one from the internet so obviously you can just copy it and then like paste it like so um, but yeah, if you do have it, then you can use it. So inside of this, we're going to call the database framework. Obviously, if you have followed my um, episode three, my tutorial number three on how to make a MySQL database, uh, you might have a database called 5M. If so, 
use the database 5M. Uh, I'm just going to use framework because I've reset my PC since then. So I don't actually have that database anymore. Um, so I'm just going to call this one framework. And then on the next line, do use framework. Obviously, once again, if you are using 5M database from my previous tutorials, call it that instead. So then we're going to use that database framework. Um, and then we're going to do create table. And we're going to call it user identifiers, which you may recognize from here, because obviously that's the table that we're re uh, re uh, referencing in the server.lua. So it has to be called user identifiers. And then in open brackets, we're just going to drag that next one down. And then we're going to do all the different fields within the table. So we're going to do steam name. And then this one's going to be uh, so the data type is varchar which is variable character and then we need the field, field size so that's like the maximum length of the data inside so i'm just going to do like 40 characters i feel like that's a good length and then the default value we're just going to do uh, not null and then we're going to do a comma for the next line uh, i'm just going to copy and paste this line and then change it because i don't want to type that out every time um, so i'm going to do this a couple of times like so so the next one's going to be steam id this is basically all of these in here. So obviously we've got Steam ID, license, all of that. But yeah, we've got Steam name, Steam ID. Then we're going to do license. Discord. 5M. IP. So once you've got all six of those, then we're going to do one more line where we say primary key. And then we're going to do Steam ID because basically, if you're if you're acquainted with databases, you already know what this means. Um, but if you don't, a primary key of a table is the, the the field where no single value will be the same. So obviously, because every user has a different Steam ID, none of them will be the same. So this basically will be the primary key because obviously Discord. Let's say uh, there's two people sharing a computer and they share a Discord account. Uh, but they have different steam logins they'll have different steam accounts steam ids but they might have the same discord id so obviously we can't guarantee that that will be different um but for each steam account there's gonna be a different steam id so that's why that's the primary key uh, and then what we need to do just on the end is add a semicolon we need to do that for all of these three lines just here that i've just highlighted um, because the syntax for sql is it needs a semicolon to end the introduction and once we've done that we can just save it and that's all of the coding that we need to do today. Uh, before we can actually run the code, we do need to actually open up the database. So obviously you do need to run exampp, which you would know if uh, you've watched the third tutorial. If you haven't, you need to install this, go back to my third tutorial and um, follow that. So obviously we need to start up MySQL. And then also we're gonna wanna open ID, but obviously what I'm going to do is just run this and this will open Heidi SQL for me. Oh, no, it's going to open that instead. Okay, open with... Oh, no. Okay, I'm just going to open it from here then. And here, this. SQL file. I'm just going to find it. There it is. So here you can see the, the code that we did before, and then we're just going to run that. And now once that's run, uh, we can just go on the left and then right click and refresh. As you can see, that's just created the database called framework. If I open that up, we've got user identifiers. So we can go to data just here, table layout, and obviously we've got all the different fields. We've got Steam name, Steam ID, license, 5M and IP. The Steam ID has this key next to it because it is the prime key. Um, so if, if that's all working for you, the database is done correctly. And we can actually go back to our server.cfg and we can actually run the um, resource in here. So what I'm actually going to do is obviously it's got to be below MySQL async because we're using that. I'm actually going to do ensure and then we're going to run the whole framework folder. So basically, this is something you can do in 5m where is if you've got a folder with loads of resources in them uh, you need to have the square brackets but you can actually run all of these the the resources in that whole folder by doing this 
doing the name of the older wet the Marian. so obviously resources so framework here all of the resources that are the, 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 that are within that uh we'll just start by just executing this one line so something else i just realized that we need to do is we do need to go down here towards the bottom and we actually need to set the steam web api key because basically you need to set this before you can get users steam id um, so you can just go to this website just here i'll have it linked in the description and register for your own uh, web api key and then you can just put it in there i'm just going to grab my one and put it in there another thing you're going to need to do is uh on your server.cfg in on the set mysql connection string obviously this would have been if you've done it previously with my um mysql tutorial the database will be framework so if you are using just this tutorial obviously you need to add this into your server.cfg uh, but obviously if you did the, the tutorial from episode three uh, you will be using database 5m so see if you have changed it to framework you need to change that or if you have in here and made it a database if not it's 5m change that you can leave that as 5m something i just realized is on line 17 if you've done the same lines as me uh this sign just this line just here print steam id grabbed uh, just after the quotation mark you need to add a comma uh now that we've made those small changes now that we can see started resource framework dash initialize uh, obviously if the if you're still having errors you might just want to do some bug fixing it should just show an error message of what the issue is that's how i fixed all the issues that i just showed um but now it's starting up uh, i'm actually going to jump into 5m and show you how this works so now that we've got 5m working, i'm just going to show you um obviously on here on the database uh, we've got all of the different fields uh, but obviously i can even refresh and you can see there's no like data within that uh, so basically the point is that when we connect to the server all of this should be logged with my data so if I just press here and then I can show you the console, as you can see, Steam ID grabbed and Steam ID is being fetched. And because I've never connected to the server before, Steam ID not found, inserting identifiers into the database. And then obviously now that it's done it, identifiers are inserted into database. So now what I can do is if I refresh this, you can see that all of my identifiers are actually database. Um, now, if I connect to the server again, it won't log him again because obviously it will, it will search and it will find them. So it will be like, oh, okay, he's connected before. That's fine. We've got all of his information already. Um, but anyone that does connect to the server, obviously it will grab their information. Um, you may be wondering, oh, why do I even need this information? Well, basically, if you're planning on like, you know, making a framework and making a server, lo loads of people will join. Um, obviously, you want to grab things like their IP and their Steam. So if they break the rules or anything, you can ban them um obviously you can use either the steam or the ip or you can use both for like added protection on the ban um or you can use them for totally other things it's completely up to, to up to you and um obviously this is only the first of many episodes regarding frameworks um but obviously if you enjoyed please leave a comment uh you know suggesting what else i could do regarding frameworks or just anything 5m related uh if you do need support join my discord which is in the description uh please do leave a like share it with all your friends and um thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one